the Internet of Things. So, so where do they need most help and support with? And then you really go there. But I totally agree with you. The service component is huge. Great. Okay, last two questions. What about sample? Where do you get the key samples? The, the, the sample, I mean, it depends really on the on the individual sensor. Yes, like we have an accelerometer, it has to be really, really precise there. But of course, this is where we have to be smart. We have to be very economic. So if you want to have something out and about in the country, uh, it, it cannot send a constant stream of uh, accelerate, uh, accelerometer data. So, so we're actually using a 2G thing, which in the FM world is actually more than enough typically. So we have to be sometimes a bit smart about you know what we do with accelerometer, accelerometer data. For instance, we have to uh, detect events inside the accelerometer, accelerometer and then just shout out, oh, something happened. So is this something you as a developer can have controls? Can we have yeah. Yeah. So, so in the end, it's always a bit of a trade-off. If you have this thing connected to, to a power outlet, you know, you can just go wild. But uh, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you have to maintain a little bit of a, uh, of an energy economy there. For instance, some things that we can do is that we can reduce the communication frequency to a bare minimum, but the, the sensor frequency can be much higher. So for instance, if we wanted to fire forest fire detection somewhere out in the woods, the, 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 the uh, temperature detection can be ongoing every five minutes, every 15 minutes, while the, the modem is only switched on once a day or only when actually something happens. So when there's an event happening, you know, temperature rises above X, that can switch on the modem and shout out an alert. That would require you, if you want to tailor this to different applications, mm -hmm. maybe as a fire or a follow the stock, you're going to have to change the firmware of these things, right? No, it's not the firmware. So, so we were trying to make these things as well, to keep them as flexible and therefore as dumb as possible so that we can do more of the, 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 the intelligence stuff in the, um, you know, in the background. So we can uh, program that frequency of, uh, of sensor readings individually for each sensor. So last It, I mean, it's taking the you know like the, the, the technology you know like the, the pick chip thing, but uh, but there, there are certain components of Arduino in there. But you know like what what of it, what is on an Arduino? But uh, in the end, it's not that important. Or it's not that. So it, it has it has a chip, but you know like the Arduino has so many more things on it that, that, that we actually not using. Uh, are you referring to the Arduino shield? That, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a. It's a no. We can talk about it. No, really. We have been working with them in one side, but this is not it anymore. No, it's, it's basically you know, like what Arduino offers for prototyping. Uh, you know, take, get, getting a programmable chip, uh, you know, with some in you know, and there. Uh, we, we reduce it to what we really need. We basically build all the little things. Yeah, in the end, you could think you could build something similar using the Arduino and the Shield, or then you could do the same thing with the with the Raspberry Pi and the chip on there as well. So the, the approach is very very similar, but it's not Arduino in that sense. Yeah, we have all the telephonic team here, so people can ask. Thank you very much. Sure.